So we're here today in Lima, Peru, in the Cemetario de Presbítero Maestro. And we're here, you can see behind me, to see this, the crypt of the heroes of the War of the Pacific. In today's video, we're going to talk more about the War of the Pacific, because it is very, very important to the history of Peru. Let's go. Before we do that, I just want to say a real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. Before we get fully into the video, I just would like to say a little disclaimer that the historiography, right, the way the history is studied and reported is different about this war depending on what sources you look at and who you're talking to, right? So the way that the, the story of the war is told in Chile is different from the way that it's told in Peru. Now, when I was in Chile, I didn't actually find a lot of um, like historical record in the museums about the war. Uh, maybe I was just looking in the wrong place. I did find this picture, this painting of a naval battle during the war in the Pacific in the Chilean uh, National History Museum. But I didn't find like a lot of monuments and things like that, like they had in Peru. There were a lot more in Peru. So it seemed like I had enough uh, things that I could film to make this video when I was in Peru, but not when I was in Chile. So this is actually the the history of the War of the Pacific sort of told from the from the Peruvian point of view and not from the Chilean point of view. You can see the crypt here. It is unfortunately not open today to go inside, but I mean, even from the outside, it's really amazing. And this, as you can see, La Nación a sus defensores en la guerra de 1879, or 1869, 1879. They're talking about the War of the Pacific. The War of the Pacific is probably I would say the second most important historically war in the history of Peru after the wars for independence. Now the war of the Pacific, we've talked briefly, briefly about it, very briefly in a previous video. I believe it was the video about Argentina and Chile. And we really talked about it just as an aside because um, we've also talked about it just a little bit in uh, our video where we visited the National History Museum in Chile, because there was a painting in that museum of a naval battle between two ironside ships during that war. And like I said, the war is extremely important to the history of Peru, um, mainly because Peru uh, lost the war and lost some territory in the southern part of Peru. Now Bolivia was also on the side of, uh, of Peru during the war and they lost territory as well. In fact, Bolivia lost access to the, uh, to the Pacific Ocean in that war. The history of the war here in Peru is, is evident. You can see it all over the place, one from the lost territory, but also from places like this, the Crypt of the Heroes. And we're gonna visit a few more places today during this video and talk a little bit more about the war, the history, and why why it's so important. So what caused the war in the Pacific? Well, like a lot of wars, came down to a combination of a lot of things. Economics, um, natural resources, political and diplomatic failures, and um, contested borders. So basically, after the wars of independence, uh, once the uh, colonies here became independent from Spain, the borders between the different colonies up in the northern part of Chile, the southern part of Peru and Bolivia, and even a s small border with Argentina, that whole area in the uh, Atacama Desert was, uh, was very vague as to where the borders were. And for several decades that really wasn't that big of a deal. Everybody sort of got by and even though the borders weren't well defined, mainly because that area up there was all just desert. Um, it was highly inaccessible and it really wasn't, um, uh, wasn't really considered valuable as far as natural resources. And a lot of that changed 
with uh, the uh, guano boom in uh, the late 1800s, mid to late 1800s. Now, when I say guano boom, yes, I do mean guano. I mean poop. Okay, so it's a derivative of basically bird poop and bat poop also, but in this case, mostly seabirds that would poop, you know, along the coast there, all over the place. And as that poop breaks down, it leaves uh, behind plenty of minerals, mainly nitrates, that are extremely, extremely valuable for fertilizer and to make saltpeter, which is used to make gunpowder. And uh, before there were, you know, chemical synthetic processes to make these, these chemicals, the best way to get it was to harvest it naturally. And so this boom of guano harvesting uh, was a huge boon to the economies of Peru, of Chile, of uh, Bolivia, and in that area, as well in, as the islands off the coast here in Peru, there was a, a lot of uh, guano mining, basically. And in the late 1800s, there was a company, a Chilean company, it was a Chilean-owned company, minority-owned, by, uh, by the British, actually, British investors. And that company uh, was operating in what was actually Bolivian territory under a treaty that the Chileans had signed with the Bolivians uh, that guaranteed that there would be no tax increases on that company and other companies operating in that area. Um, during the term of the treaty, when there were to be no tax increases, Bolivia uh, increased taxes, 20 cents on the dollar. And that was basically the match that lit the powder keg. Um, Chile refused to pay, and they, uh, they basically uh, claimed that Bolivia was in violation of the treaty. Bolivia said that it was an internal uh, uh, issue and that the Bolivian courts had complete jurisdiction, uh, at which point um, Chile and Bolivia basically went to war. Now, the interesting thing of how Peru got involved was about a decade before this, Peru had signed a secret treaty with Bolivia uh, to to basically come to Bolivia's aid if they were ever uh, in a war. And so when that was discovered, Chile declared war on both Peru and Bolivia. So the Peruvians were only really involved in the war because of that treaty and because specifically Chile declared war on Peru. So we are here in Plaza Miguel Garau. It is a plaza that is right above the central train or central uh, bus station of Peru, Estación Central, where all the Metropolitano buses come through, right below us here. And as you can see, it's in a very central part of the city. There's lots of traffic going around. There's a fountain in the middle of the plaza here. We're right next to the Palacio de Justicia, the Supreme Court of Peru. It's a very central location. And it's named after Miguel Garau, who is arguably the greatest military hero of Peru in all of Peruvian history. Um, in fact, he was recently voted in a contest to be the uh, hero of the millennium. And who was he? Well, he was a naval commander. He commanded the first, uh, one of the first naval divisions of Peru, and he worked his way up through the Navy until eventually in 1879, at the outbreak of the War of the Pacific, he commanded a naval division, which included a monitor class um, uh, warship, a iron sides warship called the Huescar. And for the first six months of the war, he managed to create a, uh, a mobile naval wall around the coast of Peru to prevent the Chilean Navy from landing any troops in Peru. And here in the plaza, it's not just dedicated to Grau, but it's also dedicated to his lieutenants, who also fought and fell in the battle that, in which he died, which he unfortunately did die, in the Battle of Anganamo. 
the plaza here not only honors Miguel Grau, but it also honors his lieutenants and others who fell in the Battle of Angamos, where unfortunately Miguel Grau lost his life. But for six months at the beginning of the war, he was able to not only hold off the Chilean Navy, a stronger, more numerous force, but also was able to uh, make his way on occasion into Chilean waters and harass the Chilean Navy, attack some of the port cities in Chile and in the disputed territories. And it's a very important uh, role that he played in the war because the disputed territories between Chile, Peru, and Bolivia were really only accessible by Navy because they were so remote. And so in order to press the war forward, Chile would have to land on those disputed territories by naval incursion. And Grau held off that naval incursion for six months at the beginning of the war. And uh, coming around, walking around Peru and around Lima here, I've seen that guy's name, Miguel Grau, all over the place. Plaza de Grau right here. There's a train station a little ways up north um, on the uh, Line 1, the metro line, Estacion Grau. Uh, I've seen his name on streets all over the place. So he really is an extremely famous and revered hero of the, uh, the military of Peru and of the war in the Pacific. And he is actually interned or uh, entombed in uh, the Crypta de los Heroes that we visited at the beginning of this video. You can see the monument right there in the center to Miguel Grau. And I would like to go over there and take a look at it, but uh, it's rush hour and I can't quite figure out how to cross this, uh, this street of insane traffic. So you're gonna get a look at it from here. Sorry about that. And here, as I mentioned, attached to the Plaza Grau is the Paseo de los Heroes Navales, the Walk of Naval Heroes, which honors other uh, heroes of the Navy who perished in the War of the Pacific. All right, we're out today again in uh, Miraflores, but we're not staying. I actually just came here because I needed uh, uh, no, that's not being, what's it gonna say? Actually just came here because uh, I was having some problems with my phone and needed to go to the Claro store in order to get that sorted out. But now that's all sorted today, we are actually going to go uh, up into the center, uh, Centro Historico, to visit the Museo de Combates, Combatantes de Arica. Anyway, it's a museum about the Battle of Arica, which is a very important battle um, in, well, what is now Northern Chile, but what used to be Southern Peru. It's a battle, very decisive battle in uh, the War of the Pacific. So let's go check that out. All right, so we've arrived at the museum, Museo de los Combatientes del Moro de Arica. And this building, museum is in there's a Peruvian flag on top you can see this building is sort of tucked away back in like a little alley in the Centro Historico and uh, this building actually is the former home the childhood home of Francisco Bolognese and Francisco Bolognese was a uh, revered officer in the Peruvian army who fought and died in the Battle of Arica. In fact, his story is actually quite interesting. He, was, he worked his way up through, uh, through the ranks of the army and eventually uh, became uh, you know, an officer in charge uh, of the entire artillery for the, uh, for the army. But he retired in 1871. And then in 1879, when the war broke out, he came out of retirement at the age of 62 and uh, commanded troops in the war of the Pacific. He commanded uh, the battalion that was in charge of defending the port of Arica. And the battle here of Arica, while the, the um, Peruvians did lose the battle, 
they fought a valiant, valiant defense, outnumbered three to one by Chilean forces who also had like extensive naval support. There's a, there's a famous phrase that he uttered during the war or during the battle, at the beginning of the battle when the Chileans, they uh, knew that they had outnumbered the Peruvians so they demanded their surrender. And uh, Bolognese said, uh, something something's effective I have a I have a sacred duty and I will fulfill it until the last cartridge is fired which is fucking baller and um, he that that phrase until the last cartridge is fired has actually become the motto of the Peruvian army so they uh, they fought the battle and like I mentioned Bolognese did die in that battle um, but a very interesting side note before we go into this museum, there's a video that we uh, made a while back on Argentina and Chile. And we talked a little bit about the War of the Pacific in that video. And specifically, we talked about a gentleman, an Argentine gentleman named Roque Saenz Pena. And Roque Saenz Pena was a, uh, a volunteer. He volunteered and fought on the Peruvian side and actually fought in this battle and he actually survived the battle, was ultimately repatriated back to Argentina. He was captured by the Chileans, but ultimately later repatriated back to Argentina and became president of the Argentine Republic. So, very interesting story there. I'd be interested to see if there's any um, like uh, memorabilia or any, any reference to Roque Science Pena here in the museum. But um, I think it's about time we go inside and we check this out. Okay, so I've been re receiving a fantastic tour from a very nice woman named Nelly, who um, speaks uh, pretty good English actually, but um, also in Spanish. We've been speaking in English and Spanish, and she gave me a tour of the entire first floor, and rather than um, have to do a lot of like subtitling and uh, whatnot. I'm just gonna go around and tell you all what she told me. So we're here in the main entryway, Francisco Bolognese. Bolognese here. This is the house where he was born and he lived until he was six years old. Now this, like we mentioned, is a cannon that was one of the Peruvian cannons, which was destroyed or scuttled by the Peruvians so that the Chileans would not be able to use it. And in this first room, now this whole house actually was restored. Um, it had fallen into disrepair after several, several um, like decades, and it was restored actually probably like a century or so later. In this first room, there's a painting here of Francisco Bolognese and uh, looking very heroic with his pistol and his sword um, at the Battle of Arica, where he, where he died. These are his sons, um, who were also in the military. One was a captain. This is Enrique Bolognese Medrando, eh, Medrano, and Augusto Bolognese Medrano. Um, his sons, they both died in the Battle of San Juan de Miraflores, which was after the Battle of Arica, when the uh, when Peru lost that battle, and also um, when Miguel Grau, who we had mentioned previously in the video, the blockade failed, the um, the uh, Ch Chilean army was able to uh, occupy Lima, and when they did, San Juan de Miraflores is a neighborhood in Lima, and at that battle, both of his sons died. And here you can see the pistol. That's his pistol. And some furniture. This is like Italian marble that was in the house. So this is a museum, of course, to you know the combatants of the war, but it's also a museum to uh, Bolognese and you know his, his life growing up and some of these things, a lot of these things that are in here were donated either by um, relatives of Bolognese or rel relatives of um, other other soldiers who died like for example this sword was donated by his uh, i believe great granddaughter and it's in excellent condition if you look at it this is his actual sword so none of the things in here are, are reproductions um the the artifacts that are in here are actually all been donated by family members of fallen soldiers 
and soldiers who fought in the battle. Now, this is interesting. This is actually the birth certificate of um, Francisco Bolognese, which is really interesting to see. This isn't the actual birth certificate. This is like a copy um, here, or like a photograph of it. But it's really interesting to see what a birth certificate looked like from back in, you know, the early 1800s here in Peru. In the next room, there's Bolognese in the middle, and these are his parents. That's his father, who was a musician and uh, was uh, apparently the like director of the the like national choir, I believe. Now, all of this is stuff that I'm remembering from my conversation that I had when I took the tour of this first floor here. So I may get some of this wrong, but I'm going to try my best to get it right. And that's, this, is, this is his mother right here as well. Now, he had a first wife, um, Francisco Bolognese. And his first wife, he had children with his first wife. Um, but I believe m um, not many of the children survived. This is one, a photo of one of his surviving children from his first marriage. And here's a picture of his family tree. And then he was married to his second wife here, uh, Manuela, Manuela Medrano Silva. So they're his children from the second marriage. That's why they have the name Bolognese Medrano. And of course, there were the two who died in the Battle of San Juan de Miraflores. There's also Frederico Bolognese Medrano and Cesar Bolognese Medrano, who unfortunately died when he was 11 years old from typhoid because there were no vaccines for typhoid at the time. Out here in the hallway, I think is really interesting is the timeline uh, provided by El Ejército del Peru, the, um, the Army of Peru, and as you can see, Hasta quemar el último cartucho, until the last cartridge is fired. And here, 1816, the birth and uh, baptism of Francisco Bolognese. When he was four years old, proclamation of the independence of Peru in 1821, which we've been learning a lot about with Jose de San Martin, the uh, El Libertador de Argentina, Chile, y Peru. And then in 1823, the family moved to Arequipa, here, in this house. They moved out of this house where the museum is. And some more things here about Bolognese joining the army, Bolognese being promoted to colonel, because he had a very long history in the army um, and actually retired uh, before the outbreak of the war, um, the war in the Pacific. So here at the very end, when he passed away, when he died in 1880 in the battle, he was 63 years old uh, and had been retired from the military since 1871. So basically, that's how old he was in this painting here when he came out of retirement in order to fight in the war. And he led troops. Not only did he lead them at the Battle of Arica, but as you can see, there he is right there, handgun out. I mean, that's pretty savage, let's be honest. It's like, this dude wasn't sitting back commanding troops from afar. He was right there in the thick of it with his, with his pistol out pistol that we saw in that case in the other room. It's pretty cool. Here, the original kitchen of the house, old wood burning stove, some pots, and the sink. It's pretty interesting. I've mentioned in some previous videos, it's kind of cool to see the kitchens in historical houses. We saw a kitchen in uh, the house of, in like, let's see, what kitchens have we seen? We've seen a kitchen in, oh, we saw a kitchen in the, um, the Jesuit mission out, uh, outside of uh, Cordoba, up in Jesus Maria. We saw the kitchen in Alta Gracia, Che Guevara, the childhood home of Che Guevara. We saw, oh, we saw Diego Maradona's kitchen. Yeah, we saw that 
in the uh, Casa de Dios in, uh, in Buenos Aires. All these videos, by the way, link in the description, of course, as always. But it's very cool to see kitchens um, because it gives you just like, the kitchen is a very intimate, personal place, you know? And it gives you a, a real window into like what life was like at the time, right? In the early like 1800s, this is an early 1800s kitchen. Very cool. Anyway, down this hallway, this little hall, into this room now. I had mentioned when we first got here, talked a little bit about this guy right here, Roque Sanz Peña. And we had wondered if uh, we were gonna see anything dedicated to Roque Sanz Peña, the Argentine volunteer who uh, joined the Peruvian army and uh, fought in the Battle of Arca. And they have an entire room here dedicated to Roque Sanz Peña. Here's the flag of uh, Argentina, which we've seen before with the crest, right? We saw this when we were in uh, Mendoza at the, uh, the museum of um, uh, Jose de San Martin, the house where he stayed in Mendoza when he was raising the army of the Andes. Here's the modern Argentine flag along with the Peruvian flag and swords which belonged to Colonel Roque Sáenz Peña and Colonel Francisco Bolognese. So like we mentioned, Peña survived the battle but was captured, taken prisoner by the Chileans and then later repatriated back to Argentina. It caused a bit of a uh, diplomatic kerfuffle, but he was eventually patriot repatriated back to Argentina and he became president of the Argentine Republic. A very interesting guy uh, and a very interesting story. Here in the next room, the uh, uniforms of some of the colonels and the officers here. Teniente Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Manuel de la Torre Santos. And I believe this is his here. Uh, another, this is a ceremonial sword of Francisco Bolognese. Uh, but this one right here, I'm told, is the uh, the uniform of Roque Sanz Peña. Peña. Sort of get out. There's, you can see my big reflection there, but like, if you can look past the glare, there it is. And this one right here is the uniform of our guy, Francisco Bolognese, right here. And of course, all of these are original and they were donated by family members. So there's no reproductions here. Pretty cool. Some old uh, uniform equipment and like a box that you would keep your epaulets in. Uh, I learned the word for this just a second ago in Spanish. Ca ca caracara. I don't know. I could be remembering that wrong. In here, this is dedicated the names of all the officers who fell in the battle. Colonels, lieutenants, lieutenant colonels, majors, captains, sub-lieutenants. And then here, this plaque underneath is dedicated to like the enlisted soldiers, the frontline soldiers who died. And after they died, their bodies were burned in like a big communal burn pit. And this actually contains the ashes of the soldiers. Now, Bolognese is not in there. He is actually entombed here. It's a picture of his tomb, and he's entombed in the Crypta de los Héroes, where we were at the beginning of the video, along with Miguel Grau. Miguel Grau, also in the, La Crypta de los Héroes. Okay, we're up here on the second floor, and the second floor is dedicated 
mostly to the history of the battle itself, um, which is honestly the stuff that, that I really want to nerd out on because um, that's, that's how I am. I'm nerdy about it. But here, they have a really big like a diorama of the battle itself. And you can see here the Moro de Arica, right? It's like a, a hill, like a un cerro, okay? And it's a hill, like a bluff, that sticks out into the sea with the town of Arica next to it and the rail line coming in. And you can see all these naval ships. Most of them are Chilean. There's like one Peruvian, one or two Peruvian ships. So the numbers that I said at the beginning of the video were actually a little bit wrong. Um, our, our wonderful guide, Nelly, said that there were 1,900, um, 1900 uh, Peruvian soldiers and 7,000 Chilean soldiers. So they were still very outnumbered. The red lines and the red uh, lights here are the movements of the Peruvian soldiers and the blue lines represent the movements of the Chilean soldiers. So you can see eventually as the battle was fought, the Peruvians had to fall back out of the town which was sacked by the Chilean army and they eventually fell all the way back to the Moro, the bluff here, and they defended the bluff and that was where the last part of the battle was fought here on the bluff. So when the, the museum is called the Museum of the Combatants of the Moro of Arica, that's what they're talking about, right? This bluff here. In the next room, this is really interesting. I did not know this story at all, uh, but this guy, Colonel Alfonso Ugarte, Ugarte, this guy was a hero of the battle and he is heroic because at the very end of the Battle of the Moro, when you know all was lost for, for the Peruvian army, he managed to grab the flag of Peru, which was planted up there on the Moro. And he got onto his horse and he literally rode it off the, um, the Moro into the sea, killing himself in the process, but managing to protect the flag from, uh, from the Chilean soldiers, such is, such is the story. And here is the sculpture of him riding off. There's a painting of it here. And he died, of course, in this, doing this. And his body, actually, his mother, because Ugarte, the family, was very, very rich. And his mother is pictured over here. She actually gave a lot of money um, to people who found his body. Like she paid money for people to go and find his body and bring it back to Lima. And before the battle, Ugarte here, he wrote this big long like will and testament, and he left money, the majority of his money, he left, he left some money to certain people, but like the majority of his money, something like 50,000 soles, which is the, just a ton of money back then, um, he left to like the poor. So, so he's a, and this is a guy that I did not know about. And he is actually entombed uh, in the cemetery, the um, uh, El Cemeterio Presbítero Maestro, where we were, where the Crypta de los Heroes is. He's not in the Crypta de los Heroes, but he's, he's nearby. And apparently there's a statue uh, of him that's like right next to his grave. We may have actually seen it when we were there and not noticed because at the beginning of the video when we were there filming, that was like two days ago. So it's possible we saw it and did not notice. The last room here has these two paintings and they're these huge paintings. Um, this one is of the moment, like we mentioned, where the Chileans approached. This is the Chilean officer here approaching Peruvian officers and demanding their surrender. 
And this is the moment when uh, um, General Bolognese said his famous word, que tengo deberes sagrados que cumplir y que pelearemos hasta quemar el último cartucho. I have a sacred uh, duty and I will fulfill it until the last cartridge. So this depicts that moment. And here depicts the battle of the Moro and the death of Bolognese. There is Bolognese firing the last cartridge. And behind him, you can see there's a Chilean soldier who's about to club him in the head with a rifle. And that is how he died. He got hit in the head by that rifle. And he died right there on the battlefield. And here is um, Roque Sáenz Peña. Well, there's a little bit of a glare. But that's him up there getting uh, uh, captured. Let me zoom in. There he is. That's him being taken prisoner. And here is the actual flag. The flag that uh, um, Ugarte, that he took and rode off with. And this is the actual, actual flag. You can actually even see right there, like some blood stains still on it. It's kind of crazy. You know, a lot of times, uh, in museums, a lot of the artifacts don't, especially from war and battles, the artifacts don't, uh, they don't make it. <laughs> you know, the flags get burned, the, the, you know, the whole battlefield gets buried over a hundred years and you never like find any of this stuff. But this place has a lot of, uh, it's a very small museum, but it has a lot of very well-preserved artifacts um, from the battle. So, very, very cool. I'm really glad we saw this. And uh, big shout out to our uh, to our host, our guide Nelly. And like I said, I decided not to um, I decided not to include all of it because it was a lot easier for the two of us to uh, to converse in sort of broken English and broken Spanish, and for me to understand everything uh, when I didn't have to worry about filming. And then afterwards, I'd come through here and film everything that I learned uh, on the tour for all of you. So, I think that's it for the museum. I think we're going to head out. And that's actually going to be it for the video, too. We've, we've seen a lot and we've learned a lot in this video. And like I mentioned, this is the Peruvian side of the story of the War of the Pacific. Um, the Chilean side, you know, is different. I did learn some of the, the Chilean side when I was studying this here in Peru. And there are certain things that um, the, where the story is told differently, but the main points uh, of the story, you know, how the war was started, what led up to it, the battles and things like that, they're pretty much the same in both, um, in both histories and in, in, in both countries. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, this is one that I had been wanting to make really uh, for a while, ever since I sort of started learning about the war in the Pacific when we were in Argentina and we made our video about Argentina and Chile. Um, that war played a little bit of a part because of Roque Science Peña. And it's something that really interested me and hopefully it interested you as well. And of course, you're getting this voiceover montage because I forgot to record an outro. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.